Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with Me, and as promised yesterday, I am going to show you how to do a journal cover. This will be a soft journal cover. This is not a hard one. So I have I am using Betty's Roses and Ledger collection. This is her fabric, and this is the pages. Look at that. This is more vibrant, but it's the same roses. Isn't that pretty? So that's the same paper. And I've just got to print on the back of these, and then I'll have all of those ready to make my signatures out of. Now, I have gone ahead and cut this down. What you need to do when you start to make your journal cover is you need to decide how big your pages are. If you've got an eight and a half by 11 page like this, then all you need to do, you know that you're gonna fold these in half like this. So that's gonna be five and a half, by eight and a half. So what I do, and that's normally my size, what I do is I make sure that I cut this a little bit bigger. I usually cut it at nine by 12, and that'll give you a little bit of playroom. Sometimes I'll cut it a little bit over, depending on if I know that I'm gonna fill it really full, and you're gonna have a gaping mouth on it, I'll fill it a little bit fuller, like I did or I'll make it a little bit larger like I did this one. This one is her Ledger and Roses. And I made it, as you can see, I made it a little bit taller. I'll pull it down here where you can see it. I made it a little bit taller, probably a half an inch on all sides. That's going to give me lots of room to put extra pages, extra pockets. I could even put another signature if I want. I've got an idea for something I want to put in the back of this one. So that's going to give me lots of room to do that and then I'm still going to have a nice journal when everything is said and done. Okay, So I have cut mine at, uh, let's see, it's 12 and a half by almost 10. And when you get it put together, you can always trim down. So I'd rather cut it a little bit big and then be able to tear a little bit off because you can always use these little pieces for tops of tags than to cut it too short. And then you have to put lace or something else on it to make it big enough. Now, the bottom part of this, well, on three sides of this, it was cut with pinking shears like they do to keep it from fraying. And I didn't want that look, so I went ahead and tore off just a little bit around the edges to get that off, and I'll use that for tops of tags. Now, on the opposite side, on the inside, this is what I'm gonna have. This is an, a Kathy Holden fabric, and this is, I think it's called uh, Dictionary Pages, I believe is what this one is called. So I'm gonna put that on the inside, and I, I thought that would go really well because she's actually got some dictionary pages on here and some alphabets and different things so I thought that would go well on the inside and I just went ahead and cut this inside piece close to the same it's not exactly but if it's a little bit larger I can always trim it off that I don't worry about now someone asked me do you iron your fabric no I do not <laughs> normally I lay my fabric out like the night before something like that and then I lay something heavy on it I just kind of press out the wrinkles like that and lay something heavy on it by the next day it's good to go I don't worry too much about the wrinkles because when I put my piece on the inside here I can kind of smooth the wrinkles out as you see this one I did not iron and it's smooth I did not iron that but when I put my inside piece in here to make this a little bit stiffer it's going to work fine. Now, you do need to put something between these two layers because if you just have just this fabric, it's just going to flop. It's going to be too flimsy and it's going to flop around. You can use cardstock. Um, you can use bubble mailers like I have used before. If you look in my playlist named Journal, you will see lots of different ways that I have made journal covers. You can use just about anything, even more fabric. If you have more fabric that uh, maybe a scrap fabric that you want to use, you can use that on the inside if it's a little bit stiffer. Now, I'm going to use this, and I know this is, oops, it's going to 
make my camera dimmer. I know this is very expensive, this stone paper that we have. I'm using it because that's all I have right at the moment. It is like $9 and something a sheet, and that, that's expensive. But you can get, and I'll try to find it and link it below if I can find it on Amazon. You may can find it at your local Walmart or fabric store, something like that. You can get that interfacing, that stiff interfacing. It'll do the same trick as this. So I'm just using this because it's what I have. All right. So it's not going to be quite wide enough, but that's going to be good enough for me. Now my screen's going to go a little bit darker until I get this white off of here. So just bear with me a minute. So I'm going to cut it about right there. You don't want it to... You don't want this to show on the outside of your journal. So make sure that you cut it a little bit narrower than what you need. And I'm going to lay mine down like that. And then I'm going to try to use my X-Acto knife and cut this. See, this is about 11 and 3 quarters wide. Well, I'm going to use my little, this little knife. Um, Kim Holtz ruler does have a metal side on it. Make sure you use the metal side. And I just cut it, leave it in the plastic and cut it that way. There we go. And I'll use that for a smaller journal. See, that'll be big enough for a smaller journal. Okay. Go ahead and take this out of the plastic. You can also save that plastic for something else if you want. Now, like I said, this is expensive, so I'm not even asking you to buy it. I don't even think we're going to carry it anymore. It it just kept going up and up and up, and it, it's not coming back down, so I'm not sure that we're going to carry it anymore when this is sold out. Okay. Now, I lay it down on my front cover, and I look to see if it needs trimmed down anymore. And I think I can do with it being trimmed just a little bit this way because it is still just a little bit big. Remember, you want it a little bit narrower than your cover because you don't want it this to show on the outside. Now let's try that one. And I always try it on the front cover and not the inside piece. Yep, that's going to work right there. You want it big enough that when you stitch, your stitches will catch it, but you don't want it too big where it's going to poke out. Now, someone asked me, do you have to stitch your covers together? No, you do not. You can glue all of this and go with it from there. You do not have to stitch. I stitch because I like the look, but you do not have to do that. Okay, now let's take this piece. And what I'm going to do is use my glue stick. I don't use a wet glue on this because with the thin fabric, the wet glue will show through. And I don't go all the way to the edges because I'm going to stitch. If you're not going to stitch, make sure you go all the way to the edges. And I don't put a ton on it. Number one, I don't want it to be, I don't want the glue to bubble up, but I put enough on it that it'll hold until I can get everything to my sewing machine. Okay. Now, I just kind of start by laying top cover up there. I hold it in the middle at the top and then I pull it down. Then I take, where is my bone folder? I take my bone folder and I don't rub it hard. I just rub it a little bit out to the edges like that. Now where that seam was right there in the middle, I do take the bone folder on the point and I rub that down. But I just kind of keep working it until I see that it's kind of all those little areas are worked out. 
Now let me flip it over and see what I got. Okay, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. This end I may end up trimming off a little bit. I'm not sure. But right now we're going to leave it because we may, if we don't trim it off, we may just spray it. Okay, now we're going to flip it over. Make sure you flip it right side up so that you'll put the inside piece right way up. Mine has a direction. If yours don't have a direction, then you don't have to worry about that. But make sure I put it that way and then I always double check. Yep. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing on the inside. I'm going to put my glue not all the way to the edge. If you're going to stitch, if you're not going to stitch, go all the way to the edge. Now, I would not depend on this glue stick to hold it together if you're not going to stitch. I would make sure that I use PVA glue. Uh, I think somebody said school glue works. I would use some other type strong glue to hold it together. I would not depend on a glue stick. I don't know it, that may hold it forever in a day, but then, but I don't know. Okay, then again, we're just going to work out. And if you you see, you've got like I've got a little bubble right there. I'm going to pull that bubble out. Okay, let's see. We're good there. Good there. And see, I've got a little bit of room on all sides to play with. So this is going to be a little bit larger than what I need, but that's okay. If I need to trim some of this off, I can. Like here at the bottom, see this inside piece comes out further than, than the outside piece. So I definitely will want to trim that off. But what I do first is I stitch, and then I come back and I trim what needs to be trimmed. So that is what we've got going to the sewing machine right there. And you can see, just by rubbing over this, and if you don't have a bone folder, just use a credit card or something like that to rub over it. Just don't pull on it hard. If you do, you're gonna get, you're gonna distort your fabric, in other words. Okay, all right. Now, I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch it. And then I'll come back and I'll show you if I'm going to trim some parts. I'll show you what I'm going to do from there. All right, I finally got it finished. As usual, my machine ran out of thread, so I had to re-thread everything. But let's see, just looking around to make sure I got everything stitched, and it looks like I do. Now you can see I, on this, I stitched a little bit up this way because I had quite a bit of this hanging out. So we are gonna trim that off. I'm gonna grab my fabric scissors. Now I won't trim straight, doing it like this freehand, but what we can do is fray that when I get it trimmed off a little bit. It's hard for me to trim it straight with a shaky hand. And then what I will do is just, I'll fray that out, and then you won't even be able to tell that I didn't go straight. And I might get frayed a little bit anyway. There we go. All right. I think that will work right there. And of course, when I work with it, it will fray more, and that's fine. It'll even itself up. But that's our cover. And I am going to trim a little bit of this. You can see that inside sticking out there. I'm going to trim a little bit, and then I'll fray the rest. So I really don't mind it, but I don't want it quite that much. So don't worry about cutting your material exactly straight because I don't ever get mine exactly straight either 
I just fray it until it looks good. Fraying it will always straighten it up. But I do tear my material when I'm going to cut it to size. I tear it and I don't cut it for this, you know, these around through here. I tear it. But when you have little places like this, you can't really tear. Too small to tear. Okay. That's enough. Quit fooling with it, Edith. <laughs> I like to fray material. But you can see how flat that is already. So I didn't really have to put it under anything. And then there's the inside. Got some little threads laying around, but we'll get off. And then it will fold just like that. And it'll be a nice cover. Let's fold it up. I usually go ahead and fold mine anyway, so we'll go ahead and fold it in half. And there is your cover. Isn't that cute? But that's how easy they are. They're not hard at all. And then we'll get these pages printed on the back. And then they will go inside. Like that. Pretty, pretty. I love this. Okay. Today's video was just going to be a tip, I guess, on how to do your cover, how to do it quick and easy. I mean, that's about it, about as easy as it gets right there. Very little to it. And when I went around and stitched, I met, first off, I made sure I started on this bottom side on the back, just in case I messed up, which, you know, my thread didn't break until around here on the front, but <laughs> some things can't be out. And then I just stitched a zigzag stitch all the way around a zigzag stitch to me helps a lot because it actually goes in and grabs that little fabric that you have on the inside. So that's what I did around mine. If for some reason you get your stitches wrong or you, you know, you don't like how they look, just take them out and redo it. You know, you, you can see I stitched down through here like three times, but you can't see but one stitch mark there. So don't worry about it. Just take it out and redo. It'll work. All right, that is it on that. Now, I did want to show you this. I'm not probably not going to do a third video on this, just simply because all that you have to do after what we did yesterday, we put our signature in there. I've covered these insides with some paper. I put a faux pocket here. That's not a real pocket. I needed to cover the bottom. So I put a faux pocket. And the reason it's faux is because it has to fold. So you couldn't put a tag or anything in there or it wouldn't fold. And then I think that's all I did. I went through and put some pockets in different places. Now I may come back and do a third one just to do the decorating with you guys. If you want me to, let me know in the comments below. And I also thought that I may go ahead and add a small signature in here. Just a few pages. Nothing big. Just a few pages because we do have room. Now... Closing it with the magnet was not going to work. The magnets would not stick. Uh, even though I used our largest magnets, they just wouldn't stick through all of this. It's almost like a cardboard. And that was okay because I'll tie it with some seam binding, really pretty seam binding. But you could probably figure out a different way to um, put a closure on yours if you wanted to. I kind of like that and then put seam binding on there or lace. I may put some lace. Ooh, I have some, I have some new sari silk. So I may tie this with sari silk. Since these are vintage fashions, I may tie this with some sari silk. I have some of these colors. So yeah, I think I'll do that. Now, this is already sold. I've already had a couple of people that requested it. And it's always first come, first serve. So uh, I think Jessica, I think you're the one who emailed me first. So I will finish this up. I will do a flip through of it, just letting you see what all I did to it. And, and we will come back and, and um, I'll already have the tags and everything made because you guys know how to make tags. I'll make the tags, but we will come back and do a little bit more decorating and I'll show you how I'm going to tie it with seam binding and put some lace here and lace here. All of that. Okay. All right. So that is that. This is this. And then after that, we'll be working on these two journals. This is the ledger and lace from uh, Betty. 
And then this one is Roses and Ledger, or Ledger and Roses from Betty. I'll put Betty's link below. We do have a discount code for her store, and that code will be directly below her link to her Etsy store. And I think, don't forget, these papers are from Terry's Paper Treasures, and I've been including her link below. If you want these papers, you can go over to her Etsy store and pick those up. Okay, what else was I going to... Oh, make sure that you check your emails today because we sent out an email with some information on it and some information about the AJ kit. Next month is September, so we'll have our September AJ kits up. Those are <laughs> absolutely gorgeous this time, I'm telling you. So make sure that you get in on those if you want. There's a link on there that you can click on. And then there's a freebie in there as well from um, Katie. So make sure that you pick up that freebie. They're labels. They're her beautiful, beautiful labels. Uh, let's see, which ones are they? They are these, I think, or these. You know, I don't really know which ones they are. I think they're these. But anyway, they're her pretty labels. So go over and pick that up. But you have to go through your email tip first, okay? Read your email. I sent you an email. Read it. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you want to be entered to win a $600 gift card to our store. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.